The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, Take care not to perform righteous deeds in order that people may see them. Otherwise, you will have no recompense from your heavenly Father. When you give alms, do not blow a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets to win the praise of others. <clears throat> Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing so that your almsgiving may be in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will repay you. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites who love to stand and pray in the synagogues and on street corners so that others may see them. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go to your inner room, close the door, and pray to your Father in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will repay you. When you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites. They neglect their appearance so that they may appear to others to be fasting. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face and put on perfume so that you may not appear to be fasting except to your Father who is hidden. And your Father who sees what is hidden will repay you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please remain standing as we invoke the Holy Spirit. Spirit, amen. Please be seated. Dearly beloved brothers and sisters in Christ, I came across a gentleman who worked for the Butterball Turkey Company, which set up a hotline to answer consumers' questions about preparing holiday turkeys. And one woman called to ask about cooking a turkey that had been in her freezer for seven years. <laughs> and the operators told her that it might be safe if the freezer had been kept below zero the entire time. But the operator warned the woman that even if it were safe, the flavor had probably deteriorated and she wouldn't recommend eating it. And so the woman replied, well, that's what we thought. Oh. We'll just give it to the church. <laughs> and you laugh. But believe me, when I had clothing drives or other types of drives in the church, people would bring stuff that I, things that had hole in, holes in them. And I'm like, you know, you're trying to get rid of your garbage or what's going on here? But isn't it often like that 
that we want to give not just to church, but to God our leftovers. And I'm not referring here to money, okay? Because God is not interested in your money, and neither am I, okay? God is interested in you, and God doesn't want 10% of your money, but God wants 100% of you. Hmm? He wants your heart. Today we hear in the readings, come back to me, return to me with your whole heart. The whole idea of the readings for Ash Wednesday are about returning to God. Return, says the first reading that we read from the prophet Joel. Even now, says the Lord, return to me with your whole heart. Rend your hearts, not your garments. In other words, don't come bringing God, you know, your secondhand clothing, but bring God your whole heart. Hmm? For God is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, rich in kindness, and relenting in punishment. God wants us to return to Him. This is what Ash Wednesday is all about. We are marked with the ashes on our foreheads. And that is from the book of Genesis, when God said to Adam and Eve, when they were kicked out of heaven, when they were kicked out of paradise. Because you know that Adam and Eve lived in heaven, lived in paradise. And then because they sinned, they were kicked out of paradise. And God says, and this is Hebrew, because the Old Testament is written in Hebrew. God says, from this soil you have come. This is what the Hebrew says. From this soil you have come, and to this soil you will return. Huh? Just like Barbara has returned. <laughs> Welcome, Barbara. She just walked in. How wonderful. I haven't seen her in a long time. Makes my Ash Wednesday. Huh? God wants us to return to Him. In heaven, huh? heaven is the presence of God. That's the definition of heaven. God is heaven. So God wants us to return to Him. So when today, when I mark you with the ashes, uh -huh, and I say, remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. In other words, we're speaking about the book of Genesis, when God said, remember from this dust you came. And to this dust you shall return. Mm -hmm. Return to me. Come back to me. Did you hear the beautiful psalm that we have today? Be merciful, O Lord. Be merciful. Uh -huh. Restore for me the joy of your salvation. Sustain in me a willing spirit. Mm -hmm. Just like I am so happy right now that all of you are here. Especially now that Stella walked oh. in. Yeah. Even though you're 25 minutes I late, you made it. <laughs> you made it. One hour to get here. One hour. Yeah, don't worry about it. Listen, Stella, when I was in the seminary, they told us, because, you know, people ask you all the time, you know, Father, when does mass count, you know, when I walk in? How late can I be in order for it to still count? As long as you make it for the collection, it's okay. <laughs> 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 in fact, when I was in the seminary, they used to tell us, you can skip everything, you know, you can forget things, just do not forget the collection. <laughs> but I have yet to forget it, have I? <laughs> but in the psalm, which Marion just sang beautifully today, I am like, wow, you know. She did an amazing job. We heard about God wanting to restore us. God wants to restore you. I'm on fire today. You all know that? Yeah. God wants to restore you to heaven. Hmm? Restore in me the joy of salvation. Hmm? And salvation isn't just something that I'm expecting when I die. The, the word salvation is from the Latin salus, which means health. God is interested in your health right now. 
What is Lent all about? What is Ash Wednesday all about? It's about reminding ourselves that we belong to God. Huh? You know, today is a very special day. Not just because it's Ash Wednesday, but because it's my grandmother's birthday. Oh, happy birthday. Yeah. And so I called her and I, and, and they have had a lot of refugees arrive in my hometown even. There's over a half a million Ukrainian refugees already in Poland, including in my hometown. And most of my relatives are very fear-filled. Everybody except my grandmother. <laughs> I, yeah, I asked her, I said, so what do you think of this you know, whole thing? You know, what do you think of Putin and all of that? And she says, uh, it's, she's, I, it sounds really, really funny in Polish, and I don't even know how to translate that correctly. But she said, no Putin is ever going to rob me of my sleep. <laughs> <laughs> and peace, she added. Hmm? She says, I've lived through Hitler. I've lived through all these communist dictators, and I will live through him. That's the attitude. Huh? That is the attitude that we are to have in our life. Huh? Why would we allow any Putin to rob us of our peace? If God is for me, who can be against me? Huh? And God is for us and with us, so who can be against us? Huh? This is what Lent is about. Return to your homeland. Return to God. Go back to God. That is the clue to having joy in our life and to being happy in our life. To knowing that we are always in God's presence and that we are always in God's hands. My grandmother sleeps secure. You know why? Because she knows whose hands she in. And she knows she ain't in Putin's hands. <laughs> She's in God's hands. And those are the best hands to be in. And you are in God's hands at every moment of your life. Every single hair on your head is counted. So important are you to God. Why would you allow anyone, any dictator or anyone, to rob you of your sleep or of your peace? In other words, every little thing is going to be okay in our life. Because God is with us and for us. Hmm? And in order to experience that, there are two phrases that the church says we can use in order to mark ourselves with the ashes. One of them I just explained to you. Remember that you are dust and to dust you shall return. And the second phrase is repent and believe in the gospel. The word repent is a Greek word, metanoia. That is, in other words, when Jesus says repent and believe in the gospel, he's saying, you know, do metanoia. Meta is above. Huh? In the Bible, God lived above. You know, like metaphysics is the above. You know, metamorphosis. Okay, everything above. So, metanoia, and the word noia is from the Greek word nous, for your mind. So go into your above mind. You need your above mindset. You got to be focused on God. Because what is the opposite of metanoia in Greek? Paranoia. Oh. <laughs> really? Paranoia is fear. When you live the opposite of metanoia, you live in fear. And that's where the devil wants you to be. Para is below in, in Greek, okay? You're below mind. And in the Bible, who's below? Who's in the underworld? The devil! And that's where he wants you to be. And his helpers here, you know, like Putin and everybody else, okay? You know, they want you there in fear. No! Take example from my grandmother. No! I refuse. Hmm? See, it's all, of the, it's all about the mind. God wants to change your life by changing your mind, your thinking. Hmm? You know, this is all about uh, what 
Jesus said, you will be fishers of men. Why fishers of men? Because in biblical times, below the water was where evil lived. Mm -hmm. So when Jesus says, you will fish people out from evil, that's what he means. And that's what we have to do. Fish people out, fish ourselves out from the fear that is really paralyzing so many people right now. Mm -hmm. It's paralyzing. Take example from my grandmother. I'm wearing my rosary because my earliest memories have always been of her praying her rosary. She taught me the rosary. She couldn't teach me the Bible because she doesn't read or write because the Nazis closed all the schools during the Second World War when she lived. So she couldn't go to school. And then the communists said, oh, you know, you don't need any schooling. You just go to work, you know, and all that. Because, you know, work is more important. You know, the sickle and the hammer, you don't need any of that. You know, you don't need to read and write, you know, all that stuff. Not important. Um, so she never learned to read and write, but she's the smartest person I know. Mm -hmm. And she didn't go to any university. And she taught me the rosary. And take example, everybody, the power in the rosary. Mm -hmm. You know, it always, it gets me that when I see the streets of Venezuela, you know, that there was a dictator there, uh, who was very happy about everything going on in, uh, in the Ukraine. And when you see the protests in Venezuela, the people bang pots and pans. But in 1974, when communists were taking over Portugal, and you can look all of this up, it's all historical facts. Mm -hmm. Sister Lucia, one of the visionaries of Fatima, she was alive at the time, she asked our Blessed Mother, she says, what do we do? The communists are taking over. And the Blessed Mother said, pray the rosary. And millions of people prayed the rosary. And within months, peacefully, without one shot fired, the communists were out in 1974. The power of the rosary the power of prayer. And this is what? This is meditation. Why do you think my grandma has so much peace? Because she meditates. Hmm? What do the Buddhists do? They meditate. Hmm? What do other religions do? They meditate. What is, what is this for? It's for meditation. It's to calm you down. You repeat the mysteries. And you feel yourself. Hmm? We have a lot to learn. And we will all be fine. God is with us. So pray your rosary. I could go down his, one historical fact after another with you about the power of prayer. Hmm? How is it that we got rid of communists in Poland? We have Kasia here. She knows very well. She, was in, she lived in Warsaw. Uh, during the time of Father Jerzy Popiełuszko, and there were great protests in Poland. If you don't take my word for it, talk to her, she can tell you. And the people marched in the streets with crosses and with rosaries. Mm -hmm. Crosses and rosaries. Prayer. Because God is all powerful. You see, I. Now I'm going to end with this today because this really strikes me. I know everybody here is a believer in God because you're here today, so you believe in God, okay? I'm going to just take you for that, okay? But I would venture to say a majority of us do not believe in the power of God. You believe in God, but you don't believe in His power. Because if you believe that God is all powerful, then you would know that he is much more powerful than any dictator and than any problem, any sickness, any suffering that you have. Is my problem big? Is the problem going on right now big? Of course it is. But our God is bigger. Because hmm? our God is all powerful. Hmm?
Believe in the power of God. Return to God. That's what this time is all about. So, you know, this is Lent. The time for us to convert. Convert, you know, that means take a turn. Huh? Get, get, take a turn. Take a turn from the cable news shows and all those, you know, people, pundits and everybody filling you with fear. Take a turn. Turn to the Bible. Turn to prayer. Huh? Turn to meditation. Huh? Get your holy water every day. Uh, there's a lot of power. Put your holy oil on. Uh, everything will be just fine. Hmm? We'll all be fine. We got through things before. Hmm? We got through World War II before. I mean, I could go down the list of history here. Okay? And we will also get through this. Hmm? Not with our power, but with the power that is in us. The power of God. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Oh, I really felt inspired today. Make sure you share this <laughs> sermon, okay? <laughs> On your Facebook. Share it, okay? I felt the Holy Spirit. So make sure you, uh, you share the sermon so that others can be nourished in this time of fear as well as we stand and profess our faith.